please rise for a pledge. <clears throat> a pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And all now, by the way, happy Valentine's Day. No place I'd rather be now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> motion to approve the minutes of the January 8th, 2019. I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 14th, 1912. <laughs> January 8th, 2019. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second it. Then move supported that the minutes be approved. It was presented and placed on file. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Aye. You received a copy of your treasurer's report? Mm -hmm. Any comments? If not, place it on file. Uh, you received your planning commission meeting minutes from January 2nd. Any comments on those meeting minutes? Anything, Jack? Place those on file, if you will, please. Uh, no appeal? No appeal. Anyone with anything to bring before the board that's not on the agenda? If not, uh, Commissioner, anything going on? Well, I'll give you a quick recap. Uh, we've got pre, uh, well, pre-audit numbers in regard to the budget for the last fiscal year. Uh, we had a total total budget limit being eleven million eighty four thousand seven eleven. We had to take sixty two thousand five hundred sixteen from our budget stabilization fund to balance the budget. It's the first time we've had to do that in years. Uh, but we also had three hundred thousand dollars plus uh, at the jail that was unforecast that we also had to spend some money on that was in need. Um, we've been uh, put into two lawsuits. One is a class action suit that has to do with tax reverted property. So I'm going to give you numbers just so you have an understanding of what I'm talking about. Let's say the tax bill was $10,000 that was not paid. The property was reverted back and sold for $50,000 and there's a $40,000 profit after the tax reverted was taken care of it was satisfied. That $40,000, this lawsuit, it would say, goes to the former property owner as opposed to the government having that money and utilizing that, that bonus, if you will. So it's an interesting concept and be interested to see how this plays out, but many, many counties, if not all of them. Uh, I don't know all, but I was just gonna say, it took a while. I would think it's a matter of time before they're all involved in it. The other thing of it is we also have a lawsuit in regard to uh, a deputy that <coughs> wound up injuring someone under arrest uh, process, and it's not good. So that's one other one. Um, We started uh, a Park and Recreation Commission under PA 261, and that came out of the Trails Committee, and it's going to give them the ability to raise funds and, and seek grants and try to help build the trail system that's uh, helping in basically the northeast corner of the county and hope to cascade it around over as time goes on. Uh, we're probably way behind a number of other counties in this area in regard to building the trail systems. So we'll see where that all goes, but uh, we acted on that, and uh, they felt that was the best one the, the best one for the county to act under, so that's where we, we moved to. Uh, airport, I can tell you, since we have Barry here also, and he can correct me when I misspeak, but uh, right now we're looking at September, 9th through the 18th tentatively, hoping to get the resurface of the runways. So as opposed to doing it in the spring, we're going to do it in the early fall. And then the uh, striping will go down after that, obviously. So we, we got a variance on that. Uh, we're also looking and hoping that the uh, schedule will change. Uh, was it December or January that we received the, finally saw an uptick in our right January. Year, January. We were up 4% from last year in January, before the last few months, because of the schedule change once we got the 30-seat Dornier jet. We've kind of been on a decline. It finally recovered. And the thing that could be on the horizon is uh, the plane being housed up in Travers. 
and uh, Traverse City man is Stephen Midway, and vice versa coming back. And that hopefully the time frame would make it more suitable for people to make connections uh, at Midway. So that's going on. Uh, I can tell you I spent a ton of time in the last week on this Rivers issue. And I literally, from last week, Wednesday, it's been nonstop. And yesterday, I received a phone call from a supervisor of Cadillac office, and she was telling me that they were, I don't, I'm going to use the word tabling it, and that's not what the word she used, but they're, they're not going to enforce anything until next year, supposedly. I am of the opinion that it needs to be fully rescinded, withdrawn, whatever you want to call it, it needs to go away. If we've got a problem, we need to sit down and discuss the issue. From what I'm hearing from law enforcement and my communications, and also the prosecutor's office, we don't have a problem. And we don't have a problem anywhere near what they're claiming out of the Cadillac <coughs> office. Um, what I would ask for you guys to do as a board is to send a letter and, and requesting Uh, well, we can to rescind to rescind to rescind the order, order. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to have a stay, if you will. Which is what they pronounced. It, it needs to go away, period. And like I said, if we've got a problem, we need to try addressing it first. You know, to have the, a, a legal substance become a, a federal issue, to where you, if you have a beer, you got to go before a judge and, and grant this to a federal court. That's just that's government overreach to the tenth degree. And if, you, if we as a group and a community want to tolerate that, there's, I can assure you there's going to be more to come. And this stuff needs to just be stopped, period. Well, my thoughts are is that because the Big Manistee River runs through our township that we need to be involved in any discussions that take place along those lines. I talked to Guy and I, I, I emailed Guy last night because I made a request to be on this committee. And I also uh, sent it off to Rich and Mobley from Norman Township. <clears throat> and we, we need to be involved. There needs to be local elected officials involved. There's a number of groups who'd like to be involved. We'll see where all this thing goes up. Uh, interesting commentary prior to the meeting tonight that uh, we'll be pursuing. So, at any rate. Uh, well, your response from that, was he the communications director or whatever? Was, they haven't even figured out how they're going to select people to be on this committee yet. Exactly. And I can tell you, as far as one of the groups that's been pushing this, from all indications I've had, has been Trout Unlimited. And there's also a paddle group up in Trout City that's pushing this. And I've also heard a few homeowners or property owners on the pine. Um, First slide. Yeah. But I'm regardless. Sorry, the jurisdiction, but our well, the most, yeah, but, but the, majority, the majority of this affects the, our county the most of it. Tell you, uh, Senator Vanderwall. I talked to him. I had Representative O'Malley. Uh, Kurt went through, is in the process of putting through a resolution at the Senate. Uh, what I was told today is they expect that to pass. Something coming out of the House. <clears throat> you know, there's no jurisdiction there supposedly in regard because this is a federal thing, mm -hmm. but that will go to the USDA, which oversees the Forest Service, and even though. It's not the state imposing that. That is an extremely strong voice going up those channels. And I had meetings on Monday with, uh, we had a phone-in meeting with uh, Congressman Bergman, uh, talked to Bazinga's office, talked to the USDA and D.C. It's been, we've been hitting this hard. This, this is causing bad public relations for this area. Very bad. With cancellations from livery owners, People that, you know, Wellston and Brethren, that's their livelihood, those rivers. Yeah. Oh, I've got it. Any questions for the commissioner? We'll stay in contact and get on these focus groups or whatever. Yeah. Well, we can ask. Doesn't mean they're going to give us a place because they know what they're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from you, Guy? I've got a short one. There are no new complaints. 
only had one land use permit, but it was for a new home, and a couple of construction permits for mechanical and electrical trades. We're still busy st every day, um, but we're not swamped with work right now. Uh, at the Planning Commission last week, uh, due to Linda Finout's resignation, the Commission elected Mike Willett to be the new secretary of the Commission. Um, Rob Carson is preparing a, a scope and cost and timeline for preparing a new master plan for the township. And uh, Oak Grove showed up at our meeting. Oak Grove, who's trying to develop a, um, a housing development at the north end of Washington Street at the very southwest corner of the township. They came in and said that they are moving forward. Um, they've got some stumbling blocks, but they're just working through them. So. And the solar farm is proceeding as well? Yeah, as far as I know. I haven't talked to them this month. Or, I mean, last month. Okay. Um, I did want to bring something up to the board. I bumped into um, a program that the state has. It's called the Fire Insurance Withholding Program. It's a program designed to provide municipalities with financial protection against <coughs> the cost of cleaning up a damaged structure following a fire. And basically what it is is the insurance company sends 25% of the settlement to the township, 75% to the homeowner, to clean up, repair, or fix their home. Um, if they do, then we release that 25% we receive to the homeowner when they're finished. If they do not, we use that 25% of it from the prior insurance money to clean it up ourselves. And I just bumped into it on a, that daily newsletter we get from Michigan Townships Association. And it looks like a simple one-page application um, and a resolution that we would have to pass. And I just wondered if the board was interested in it, I'd pursue it. I know of two burned structures in our township that, and I don't cruise around all that much, but <laughs> there's one on the corner of Claybank and Pine Creek Road, a triple trailer, still sitting there. And then there's one on this Road, I think it is, isn't it, Jeff? There's a, mm -hmm. You probably haven't been down that in a while. A trailer? No. A uh, home, no, burned, home that burned. never got cleaned up. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's yeah, it's on Fisker. Yeah, yeah, but that's the that's her name. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway. I, I, mean, I thought she rehabitated that after it burned. That was a long, long time ago. It was well, five it, years ago. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking it was been longer. Ten, fifteen longer. Yeah, yeah. I was I was still working here back then. Well, a year yeah, ago, it was I probably had, fifteen. A year ago, I had a neighbor come in and complain. It wouldn't fill out the written complaint. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's still there. So you need energy. All I want to know is if the board has any interest in applying for this program. Sure. We'd have to, set, right, up, we'd have to set up an escrow account. To give us more information on it. I can. what we have to do. Okay. We'll do. They've got a whole page of frequently asked current questions. Do we do that with a current insurance company? Or? What's that? Do we do that with a current insurance company? I mean, I know it's their insurance that's given us the money, but right. they clean it up. But is our insurance company going to handle that between? You mean handle the money? No, we'll handle the money, but the conversation, or does it just come right here? I think it comes right here from the insurance company. Sounds like we fill out the form for the address or whoever the homeowner is, and we'll go right to your insurance company, and then they would do it through the address. Yeah, this the resolution. Yeah. Well, this could be all part of this ongoing pro process we're doing for cost recovery. Yeah, it's, it's like it could cost be part recovery. of it. Could be. Yeah. yeah. There'd be maintenance involved in that as well, so yeah. that's kind of setting up the building department. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's it. Great. Thanks. Any questions? No, I have no questions. You? Anyone else? Anything going on across the street?
Yeah, um, to tie into what Guy was saying, I've seen that work in other townships where that comes into effect to clean up the, the mess that's there before you get any kind of road problem. So it, uh, it does work. Um, for the last month, we had 26 activities, <coughs> one fire related, 12 medical, and 13 station trainings and other trainings. Uh, chiefs and officers had 56 hours, and the total man hours. <coughs> Um, personal hours were 80 and a half. Uh, for the apparatus, we're looking at the specs, like I said, for 131 last month, they're narrowing down. I've also had another company call me and wanted to give us a price on it, so I'm like, sure, I'll give them the information and they can go from there. So we're comparing apples to apples, trying to get them as close as they can because some of the do, um, companies have different, just different things all together. Um, 135R had um, some steering gearbox repair, and then when it was in there, they found that the uh, fuel lines and the brake lines were pretty corroded, so we had to replace that when it was there. That's back in service, it was only out of date. <coughs> um, equipment, the new turnout gear that was ordered through the revenue sharing for the association is being built. It's taking a little, little while longer, but it's finally being built. I'm not sure when we'll see that, but it should be hopefully before next meeting. Um, we do have, uh, we ran into some information where we could acquire some free JAWS equipment from the state down, from downstate um, the department. One of our former folks, Frank Post, knows folks down there. So um, I have pictures, they're black and white, but if you guys want to look at them, it's probably worth roughly between eleven and $15,000 worth of equipment. It works, it's in good shape. They just bought electrical, portable ones. They're on um, Interstate 96 down there, 94, whatever it is. So. They use them a lot. Um, they're in good shape, so we're able to pick those up at no charges to go down and get them. So um, that would be a great asset to have. Uh, personnel, we're, we're looking at our roster. <coughs> Some folks that haven't been around in a while, we're contacting them, so we've reduced our roster down to about 20 personnel. Uh, but we do have the, the best group of people over there that you can imagine. So um, we do. We just continued some uh, training. We did, you know, truck checks for the month, small engine, in, engine equipment, required blood borne pathogens, SCBA inspection, um, some ice rescue, and then also some other training for the association. Did wildland course classes that we put out over at the station over there. And that was basic firefighting for wildland, some basic weather, and then urban interface. A um, couple of things for tonight would be the automatic aid agreement that we talked about with Danny before with the city. We mentioned that before, pretty much just through the US 131 corridor up in the East Lake um, where the <coughs> industrial park is up 55. So that would be an automatic gate for structure fires. And they've been common, we have to request them. So if they're right out of the gate in the beginning like East Lake is, we have all those people on scene right away. It's they've been very beneficial when you have people that are around there today if they're immediately available to go to the scene and assess the situation and get eyes on it. The hospital fire, the, <coughs> the other fire scenes, wellness center. And then I have uh, the revenue sharing cycle one for 2019 for the funds for the replacement of the apparatus. I have a copy of that here and I'll give it to you. And then um, through the association, we also applied for fireworks grant money to put more into the training facility to get it up to where we had envisioned it in the beginning. So I don't know where that's at. They canceled their meeting the other day due to weather. So hopefully we'll hear something on that and make it up. And then we haven't had time to look at the, the birding ordinance with the people calling me about the trucks. And the weather went out of my house. So. <laughs> other than that, that's, uh, that's all I have. Any questions? That, uh, the two items you mentioned are on the agenda. Okay. Uh, Chuck, and uh, again, uh, tell all the folks over there we appreciate everything they do for us. Um, there are no significant changes in the liquor inspections. And the only other item that I have is that a reminder that the Revenue Sharing Board grant deadline is March 1st, 5 o'clock. Um, under new business, uh, Mr. Tomachinsky is here. Uh, he sent a uh, to, to request a letter from the board in support of uh, veterans. I believe it's health center. Tom, is that what it's called? 
a veterans clinic that we're trying to get in Manistee. It could be Manistee Township, could be the city of Manistee, could be Fire Township. We want to get in that area. Mm -hmm. What it is is um, I made contact with a gal from the VA in Saginaw. She lives in, in Manistee Township, drives <laughs> the Cadillac every day. But uh, we got started, the two of us, and we ended up getting Ray Franz, the secretary, Jennifer Smeltzer, and we got uh, Kelvin Murphy from the VFW from uh, Kelva, uh, and Keith Green, and things of the township, the mm -hmm. township resident level. We're, we're, we're the core group, and what we've been doing is getting signatures, and now we're trying to get letters of uh, recommendation of uh, support for a clinic. In 2008, we were designated to get a clinic, and nobody ever followed up on it, and we're, we've lost all them all for the last 10 years and not having one. Um, what, they, what, they, what I was told at first is they were looking for something with some acreage so that they could put some food plots nearby so veterans, if they wanted to grow some vegetables or give them something to do, some people that got a lot of time on their hands, it would give them a place to go and things to do. Uh, I know in Filer we have about three or four parcels of property that could be used. The buildings are there. Um, I, I, I've been thinking about here in Manistee Township, all you got is a school that probably be big enough for it. And maybe the Road Commission building, I don't know how that offices anymore. But uh, it needs to have a pretty good size square footage. The clinic in Cadillac uses some of the Dunham building and the clinic in Traverse City was built uh, for that purpose, and now they're building another new one up there. But I'm, we met last Saturday with uh, Jack Bergman, and he gave us a real good uh, impression that things were going, what we were doing was right. And so all I'm doing is asking all the boards to give us a recommendation, a letter of uh, support for the, for the clinic. There are 2,500 veterans in Manistee County utilizing services right now. And if we draw from the northern part of Ludington, some of Baldwin area, which is Lake County, and northern part of Benzie County, we could be over about 7,000. And if that clinic comes here, there are probably people in, in the city and the area that don't use any of the service that would because it would be here. So the numbers would, could, could go up. Um, if you guys don't mind, I got a board here. A couple of members here didn't get the same petitions for an individual I got when I'd love to get your signature out. <laughs> so that's about it. If you have any questions, if I can answer them, I certainly will. Well, Tom, you supplied me with a, a with a letter, uh, uh, an example of a letter you'd like to see yeah. from the from the board, and uh, I'm. I personally have a total, total support for the veterans, but yeah. uh, I don't know, does it, does it require a motion to send this letter, or should we just send it off? I don't know. Mm -hmm. We can just do it. We can just endorse it and prepare it. And, and that, did you, you, can did you <laughs> provide me with an address to send it to? Mm. Give it to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do no, that. If, if anybody else wants to do a letter, you, I'm sure you guys will accept that and you, you know how to get in touch with me, but sure. I'm also a trustee in Filer Township, so they could send it to the township hall and care of me and, and then put it in my basket. So there's two ways of getting letters of support to me. If, if, you know, and they can be individual, they don't have to be strictly from a business. Uh, Great. Good work. Yeah. Good work. We're, we're trying. Thank you. Any other questions for Tom? Mm -hmm. uh, next item on the agenda is the automatic gate between the township and the city. We've um, worked out a, uh, an agreement between the city of Manistee and the township of Manistee. Uh, you want to hit the highlights of that agreement? Uh, basically, it's um, again, it's the area between the U.S. Uptown 130, U.S. 31 yeah. corridor and M55 corridor. Pretty much where the hydrogen areas are, up to M22 on 31, and out to the industrial park on 55. And then from our side of things, it would be pretty much anything in the city of Manistee. So when they had a structure fire, we would go to them. And if we had a structure fire, they'd come to us. So 
manpower, personnel power is huge these days. Um, they're looking for people that can pack up because they're limited and we're looking for people that can pack up to go interior. Like on the wellness center, it took how um, many people went inside? Six to eight people. And your bottles, you know, you can only go through two bottles and then you have to take a break. Mm -hmm. Take your blood pressure and all that. Well, Why that's changed? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, well like people are having heart attacks and oh, yeah. you know, falling out, so um, it's, it changes every year for me. So. <laughs> well, this is uh, this is parallels the agreement between the city and the township of Pilot, right? Correct. And parallels the agreement we have with East Lake and us. So. Um, I'd entertain a motion to uh, enter into the automatic aid agreement between the township of Manistee and the city of Manistee. I'd make the motion that we enter into an agreement between the city and the township for automatic aid. I'll second that. It's been more supported that we enter into an automatic aid agreement between the city and the township. Any discussion? You want a roll call? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Carried. Thanks for your work on that, fellas. Yeah. Uh, next item is revenue sharing grant application. Um, with Chuck's help, uh, a uh, revenue sharing grant application has been prepared to submit to the revenue sharing board for $50,000. <coughs> I know that's a large amount. But we have to replace a four hundred fifty thousand dollar fire truck. So, I'm going to entertain a motion to submit that grant. Huh? How much are we for? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Make a motion to submit that grant for fifty thousand dollars to the revenue sharing board. I'll second. It's been supported that we um, sign the grant application to the revenue sharing board. For cycle one 2019. Yes, ma'am? Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Thank you very much. Next item on the, on the agenda is the agreement between Brown Township and Manistee Township for fire and medical protection. Uh, I talked to Township Supervisor Paul Adamski about um, the renewal. They were in agreement for the renewal for the same as last year. Uh, you don't, know, just off the top of your head, how many runs took up Brown Township? Uh, last year, I think we only had one or two. So okay. um, in previous years, we had up to like six, but it fluctuates. Mostly medical calls. But we do have uh, woods fires out there in that area. Well, stand five fee is two thousand dollars, and then the fire calls at two hundred dollars for the first hour and a hundred dollars for every hour after that. This includes uh, the medical runs as well. Mm -hmm. So they have no fire, no or rescue. No, there's no. no we do the so south. We do, it for we do, we do it. the north side of the river. We'll do Doesn't Norman do the south side? Right. We're we, do the, we do the south side, and then uh, Dixon does part. Oh, back to my dust part? No, back to my dust part. Okay. So, three different ways. Right. Is there a motion? <coughs> I make a motion that we enter into this contractual agreement and following what we did last year between Brown Township and Manistee Township for fire and medical protection. No, it's better. It's been a little supported that we enter <coughs> into the agreement for fire and medical protection between Manistee Township and Brown Township. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the Manistee County contract for the 2019 tax roll maintenance, tax rolls, and tax bills. We're going to pay them to collect their money. <laughs> See our commissioners already signed? <laughs> a check in the mail. <laughs> uh, the first one being, uh, let's see, first one. The first one 
I get these right. The first no. one is this one. One in your left hand. Right. The other one's for some. Yeah. The, one the next one's for some. Set. County agrees to provide the necessary personnel, materials, equipment, and technology to prepare the summer tax bill for the state education tax 2019 collection for the price of $1 per parcel. I think that's the same, isn't it? We need to enter into that agreement. Second and we supported that we enter into the agreement to uh, with, with the county to uh, for the 2019 summer summer, summer tax bill. No. No. That's the next one. Right. <coughs> First one we're doing is maintaining the tax roll. That's $4.12 a parcel. Correct. Four dollars and twelve cents per parcel. That's a, it's, that's a slight increase, but ten cents a parcel. Move supported. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed. Carried. And the other one is for the summer tax contract between. Uh, County and Manistee Township for the state education tax. It's for preparing those bills. Yep. That's a bucket of parts. Is there a motion? Make a motion to enter into the contract with the county to fund your summer tax bills for a dollar a parcel. No second. supported that we enter into the agreement with the county for the summer tax maintenance of one dollar per parcel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Pine Creek Road repair contract. Um, previous to Madison County Road Commission Saints changing their um, policy on how the, how the uh, cost for repairing roads will be distributed. Um, our total to do, and we've already agreed to do, Pine Creek Road for the sum of 205, 208000 But since they have a new uh, uh, operating procedure, the, uh, the cost share has been adjusted, and now it is, our, our share is 137000 <laughs> well, this is for wedging, uh, uh, sealing, fog sealing, uh, striping. Uh, like like Olson Road, if anyone has been familiar and traveled Olson Road, I think the second time they did a pretty nice job on that road. When they hired a contractor, and, the contractor did really nice and that's what they are doing with this. Yeah. But the, uh, the cost estimates from the contractors also came in lower than the market anticipated. So mm -hmm. it's quite a reduction for us. It may be allow us to do a little bit of something else somewhere else. But I would entertain a motion to enter into the agreement with the Road Commission to do Piker Road. It's 4.8 miles from M55 to uh, Palmer Road for 137500 $137, It's been moved supported that we do Pine Creek Road in this entire length and enter into an agreement with uh, the Road Commission for 137.5. Any discussion? Along those lines, I asked, I just asked Mark to give me a ballpark figure for putting a, I think it was a one or one and a half inch cap on that road to wedge it and then cap it. 
black dot. The black dot, that was going to be 388,000, our portion. Mm -hmm. So I, I did investigate it. I <clears> think <throat> this will work just fine. <laughs> So no supported, all in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Carried. Thank you. You received a copy of the bills. That was prepared uh, for January 1st to January 31st, I believe. First. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion. I make the motion to pay the bills as provided and as received. I second that. It moves supported that the bills as provided from January 1st to January 31st, 2019, and bills received and paid. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed? Madison County MTA doesn't meet till March. Well, yeah, that's fine. March 27th. It's here. I guess so. Uh, I have got here. It's here. I would need an appeal. It will be on March 5th at 7 p.m. here at the hall. Board of Review Organizational Meeting will be Tuesday, March 5th. <clears throat> and that will be, at, I'm assuming, at 6 o'clock. That's what it's been in the past. Uh, yes. That's yes. the organization. That's the organization. Organizational meeting. The Planning Commission will meet Wednesday, March 6th here at the Hall. Board of Review will meet Monday, March 11th from 2 to 5, 6 to 9. And on Tuesday, March 12th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. to hear appeals. And the next regular meeting of the Massey Township Board will be Thursday, March 14th here at the Township Hall. Any other comment? I have a motion to the order. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. So those supported, we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.